Hey guys, so today I'm going to be sharing with you some of the products that I have hit pan on. This is one of my favorite types of videos to film. It's just so oddly satisfying when you hit pan on a product. And I only get to film these videos like once, maybe twice a year because it's not that often that I hit pan on a new product. I think my last one was last fall. I can leave that link down below for you if you're interested. But I have recently hit some more pans and I'm excited to show them to you. This is such a weird corner of YouTube, isn't it? Like. Why do these videos exist? I couldn't tell you, but that's not gonna stop me from filming them because they're fun and you guys seem to enjoy them as well. And it's also just a great way to show you products that have really gotten a lot of love from, from me. So let's go ahead and start with some eyeshadow pans. Eyeshadows are especially rare for me to hit pan on just because I have quite a few eyeshadows in my collection, but I did recently hit pan on a shade in my Anastasia Norvina palette. This is one of my favorite eyeshadow palettes, and I have hit pan on the shade Dazzling here, which is such a beautiful, unique shade. It's a taupe, but it's so much more than that. It's got some like rosy, purpley hues to it as well, and I just think it's so beautiful. There's definitely a reason why that is the shade I've hit pan on, just because it's so pretty. Um, great one and done shadow look. So many of the shimmers in here make a great one and done look. I will say the shimmers in here, or all the pans in here, are rather shallow, and the shimmers especially are very soft. So it was not that hard to hit pan on that shade. And this is actually currently my one month one palette for August, and I wouldn't be surprised if I hit pan on a few other shades, like maybe Rose Gold, Summer, Dreamer. I'll probably have a few more pans by the end of this month. Another eyeshadow that I've hit pan on is in my, one of my favorite palettes, the BH Cosmetics Summer in Saint-Tropez palette. This is especially impressive because I've only had this palette since the spring of 2021. So I've only had it for a few months. But I've already hit pan on the shade Sand, which is such a useful shade for me. It is the perfect pinky transition shade for my skin tone. I pretty much use this shade every time I use this palette because it's just what I use to kind of start out the crease and it just helps other crease shades blend out so much better because it is almost like, it's like a deeper version of my skin tone. So it just kind of helps deeper shadows blend into my skin tone better. So that is why I've hit pan on that shade. Once again, that did show me that these pants are very shallow and the mattes in here are pretty soft. They do kick up some powder when you dip into them. That doesn't really bother me, but it's another palette where, you know, I'm not necessarily surprised I hit pan because I use that shade so much and because the shadows are, are pretty soft. They're not too hard to hit pan on. Okay, another eyeshadow that I've hit pan on is one that unfortunately I'm gonna have to declutter because I ruined it, but it is the ColourPop Super Shock Shadow in Sailor. I actually hit pan on this a while ago and then I revived it because it was starting to get dry and crumbly. I do have a little bit of pan in there now as well, but unfortunately I used rose tip seed oil to revive this. And the oil itself, I don't think was like terribly expired when I used it. I think it was just starting to go off. But now this smells like rancid oil. So I'm unfortunately going to have to toss it, even though the oil did a good job, you know, making it creamy and like usable again. But I would say maybe use an oil that is known to have a better shelf life, I guess, than rosehip seed oil. But um, I did hit pan on it, and I feel like that's worth celebrating. I'm glad I got a lot of use out of it before I did have to get rid of it. But really, really pretty shadow. It's a beautiful, like, duochrome, um, kind of rosy taupe with a blue shift. Very unique. I feel like there's no other color quite like this. So I believe those are all of the eyeshadows I've hit pan on. I actually hit pan on a blush today, and this is actually what prompted me to go ahead and film this video, because I was kind of waiting until I had a few more products on my list. Then I hit pan on this one, and I was like, ah, it's finally time for me to film another products I've hit pan on video. But this is the CoverGirl Cheekers Blush in Natural Twinkle. I knew that I was really close to hitting pan on this for a while, because I've had a huge dip in it for a very long time. And today, as I was using it, I had the thought, I feel like I'm gonna hit pan on this like any day now. And then I looked down and there was like a teeny tiny little like pinprick of pan showing. And this one I'm especially proud of because I didn't have it in a project pan. I just hit pan on it naturally. So that feels like a huge <laughs> accomplishment to me. And you know, these CoverGirl Cheekers blushes don't come with a ton of product. It only comes with three grams. So it is a pretty small blush, but I still think that hitting pan on any blush is a huge feat. Fun fact, the first blush I ever used up was the CoverGirl Cheekers blush. It was a peachy color. I don't know if they still sell that particular color, but it was a really pretty blush. I used it 
every single day in high school. That was the only blush I owned and I used it until the very last drop. That was before I even knew about, probably even before I knew about makeup videos on YouTube. I was probably watching YouTube at that point, but definitely wasn't, I don't think Project Panning even existed. Um, I didn't know anything about like repressing or anything. I just used it up until there was like the teeniest ring around the edges and then I went on to a new blush. So good memories there. I also recently hit pan on a face powder. This is the Jordana Forever Flawless Pressed Powder. I actually love this powder and I'm so sad that I won't be able to buy it again because Jordana closed down last year. But this is a beautiful powder. It's one of those powders that doesn't look like powder. It works great for my slightly dry skin. And especially in the summer as I'm like super sweaty, I do find it necessary to set my entire face with powder and this has been such a good one. I did recently roll this into my project pan so we'll see how long it takes me to use up but that's after hitting pan on it only like a week or so ago. This is another product that I totally hit pan on naturally not having it in a project pan but this is the ABH Dip Brow Pomade in Taupe. I actually hit pan on this a while ago so you can see there's a pretty big hole there <laughs> down at the bottom but I have been using this brow pomade every single day or at least like let's say like five days a week on average um, since the end of 2019. So over a year and a half now, still going strong, still just as creamy as it was on day one. And yeah, this is one of those products that just gives you such a great bang for your buck. So much more cost effective than any drugstore brow pencil. So glad I made the switch to this. I know I've talked about it many times on my channel, but just wanted to give it another shout out because it's such a good product and it does not dry out or at least it takes a very, very, very long time to dry out. And I still think, even though I have hit pan on this, I still think that I've probably got at least another year left of, of product in here, maybe even longer. All right, this next one is kind of like a skincare-ish product, but it is the Kopari Starry Eye Balm, and I actually hit pan on this recently. Um, it's a pretty thin little pan of product. This is interesting. I think there's a lot of different ways you could use this. The way that it's described, it's kind of meant to be used in place of an eye cream. So I actually use this on nights that I apply tretinoin to my face to kind of protect my eye area because it's a very emollient balm. And I feel like it just kind of like seals off that eye area so my tretinoin can't like migrate to my eyelids or anything. So that's how I use it. I've also heard of people using just a tiny little dab of this on their under eyes before applying concealer to help um, keep it from like creasing or looking too crepey. So that's another good way to use it. But yeah, I like it. I like it. I don't know if it's something I would buy with my own money. This was sent to me in PR, but it's been quite useful for me and I've already got a nice bit of pan on there. I wasn't sure whether to count this one, but I'm going to. Um, I did sort of hit pan on my Wet n Wild Franken bronzer. I made this out of my Wet n Wild Walking on Eggshells eyeshadow quad. I pressed it into kind of this like round blob in the middle of this old blush pan and I do have a nice little bit of pan kind of showing in the top corner. It's weird when you have a product that's repressed like this because sometimes you hit pan in like the weirdest spot but I'm gonna count that as a pan because I have been trying to use this up. It's been a very 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 slow process but I do want to celebrate the tiny little bit of pan that I have showing on this. Okay, finally, this is a weird one. I also didn't know whether to include this, but I'm going to, mainly because this is a product that I feel like doesn't get enough love on my channel, but it's such a staple for me, and it is <laughs> the Dr. Bronner's Bar Soap. I guess you could say I hit pan on this. I mean, it's not like it's actually like sitting in a pan, but I feel like it counts for something. And this is what I use to clean my makeup brushes and sponges. It's so inexpensive, you get a huge bar, and I love it. Um, I've gone through many of these. They also make a liquid soap, but I find that one a little too liquidy. It's just a little bit harder to work with because it's so liquidy. And I sometimes end up getting like too much in my brushes and then I'm not able to rinse all the suds out, but this is much easier to use. So much better than like the Beauty Blender Solid. It just, it just does a much better job and it's way cheaper. It's like a third of the price. So highly recommend this bar soap if you haven't tried it for cleaning your brushes. You can find it at Walgreens, 
Um, a lot of drugstores carry them, and then of course online in various places too. So those are all the products that I have used so much that I hit pan on them. It's always fun to film these videos and just kind of show you the products that I have used a ton of. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. I do have a year-long project pan going on as well. If you'd like to check that out, I'll leave that link down below. But otherwise, make sure to subscribe to my channel if you've not already, and hopefully I will talk to you very soon in my next video. Bye.